both are here. All right, well, I will let you both take it from here. I'm really excited about this conversation. Um, so take it away. Wonderful, thank you so much, Saul. Hi, everyone. I'm Daniela Loftus, and I'm the founder and CEO of This Outfit Does Not Exist, which is a company that helps bring digital fashion to life. So I work with companies, I work with investors, and I also actually work with consumers to help make the digital fashion space tangible and relevant and help people to navigate it. And I couldn't be more thrilled to be joined by Evelyn Mora this afternoon slash evening, depending on where you are. Evelyn is one of the real OGs in the digital fashion space and somebody I've looked up to for a very, very long time for her pioneering work in technology, sustainability and digital fashion. So welcome, Evelyn. Oh, thank you. That was a very kind of you. <laughs> Excited um, to be here. Thank you for having me. So, so happy to be with you. Um, and Evelyn, I'm gonna let you give a uh, background on yourself because I think that I can't fully do you justice. Um, but what I would also love to begin with a little bit of a discussion of is the way that you perceive the metaverse. So, you know, in the past couple of hours, we've had some really brilliant definitions around what the metaverse is and its potentials. But given, you know, your background and your experience, which I'd love you to go into a little bit more, what do you define a metaverse as? Right, I'm going to try not to go too deep. Um, I find metaverse as almost like a new opportunity to redefine um, the, uh, the time we spend online and maybe get a new opportunity or challenge um, or not a challenge, but chance to live, build better societies, essentially. And by the way, every time I'm talking on the phone or I'm on a call, there is like helicopters and like people changing the rubbish. And I don't know what is it, but it's like if you see some animals coming in, like pigeons and stuff, don't worry. It's just, just always happens. I mean, if we were just speaking in the metaverse... Unless, of course, you'd programmed some pigeons to come in, we wouldn't be having these problems. So yet another argument for the transition there. Yeah, I think um, just to add to that first question is, I don't think um, we, I mean, we sh I think there is not one right definition for metaverse. Everyone has their own definition. Mark Zuckerberg has his, his own definition of metaverse, which many don't agree with, some agree with. Um, I think we'll see what metaverse really shapes into. I think we're in a very early stage and there isn't much many metaverses out there like open, right? The ones that we are actually anticipating. Um, so I think in the next six months, we'll see a lot of metaverses really open up hopefully. And um, we'll see what that definition then really becomes. Interesting. Would you say that there are a set of metaverse native characteristics, you know, for example, the ability to go into a virtual world, which isn't storyline based, where you can satisfy the majority of desires that you would in the physical world, apart from the fact they're obviously cerebral. So, you know, earning a living and experiencing culture, would you say that that is a component of a metaverse? Yes, I would. Um, I have um, a pretty sort of wild, uh, a little kinky vision of metaverse. Uh, we have a really cool community and they also have really crazy ideas, uh, which is like super funny because we align a lot in how we sort of uh, see the potential in the metaverse and what we want to experience. But um to me, I really love the real-time element of the metaverse, but I also consider Digital Village as a gaming company. Sure, you know, I come from a very deep and strong fashion background, um, but it's not just fashion, but that is where we are starting. Obviously, we are, we've been pioneering a lot of things when it comes to fashion, but I think fashion is a lot more than just digital garments or skins. Um, so I think uh, our game theory for Digital Village and the experiences that we are building 
um, it's hard to define them. And maybe I don't want to even tell what is what those are yet, but um, it's definitely a strategical um, solutions and plans to change the behavior, how we spend time online, how we interact with cyberspace in general, and of course, very deeply rooted in the idea, ideologies of, or values of sustainability, how we can um, build impact, then how can we have fun and satisfy our needs and desires in the, in the metaverse? Really, really interesting. And can you shed some light just on your personal journey, which I know is a very interesting one, transitioning from sustainability and sustainability in fashion, physical fashion, into digital fashion, now into actually being a metaverse builder, and just shed some more light on how that journey came about for you. Um, to be honest, in the very early stages, uh, my focus was I stumbled into tech. Um, it was a trap because I always run myself into situations where I'm constantly looking for new tools and new ways that we haven't discovered to tackle challenges around sustainability. So everything essentially started from trying to replace a, a physical showroom with a 3D showroom. Um, and then I went down the rabbit hole of 3D and from there to, to the metaverse. Um, I guess when it comes to sustainability, um, it's really, really complex topic and there is not maybe one way to approach it. So there are several different, very much valid ways to tackle challenges around sustainability. But um, there are people laughing here. French people are so funny. Uh, lost my thoughts. Um, Brohood, sisterhood of tech. We should start a, um, a club and everyone should be there, female and male. Anyway, so um, from replacing, tackling sustainability, it went to all the way to using digital tools to essentially improve our physical supply chains for fashion. But it's such a sensitive topic. It's like a never ending book. You think about, okay, let's reduce waste. Let's uh, digitize our sampling process. And then that has an effect. And then, you know, you take a step and that has an effect. So supply chain is like echoing, going back and forth. It's not just like one thing. It's a lot of different things that essentially, you know, need to be thought through. I don't even remember what was your question anymore because of this funny, funny, funny Frenchman, but yeah. So my question was about, you know, what, you know, what brought you from sustainability and fashion? You've kind of answered it into digital fashion, into actually now what you're building, because I think that your yeah. journey and your revolution is going to be quite similar, albeit like a couple of years in the past, yes. where we are now. But, you know, it's probably an experience that a lot of brands and a lot of experience have is very, you know, first of all, why is sustainability and fashion? <laughs> how can the digital space contribute to that sustainability and then you know we move into stage three which is the metaverse and how do they engage within that which is kind of what i want to go into in the select yeah yeah totally totally so let me just put it this way history is repeating itself what did i do in 2013 i founded helsinki fashion week um i changed the concept completely then I started going, uh, sort of adding days to the to the week. Started as a two day two day event, as a weekend event. Went to a one week event. We started producing events in an island. We went global. We stri strictly became sustainable, not only in production but the designers that we uh, showcased and presented. Uh, we put a lot of sort of uh, rules and regulations of what kind of designers we want to showcase. We chose to only showcase non animal leather. So we did a lot of these kind of things, but, you know, eventually I built an eco village and became a consultant for governments around sustainable and smart city building. So it started with fashion, but it became a village, a physical village. So I guess that's what's happened. I, I just keep building things, uh, you know, scales into some spatial form. And I guess that's rooted into the idea that fashion is what we wear, but ultimately what we wear has a lot of sort of subconscious, unconscious sort of reasoning. Um, 
you know, how we consume, how we live, what kind of music we listen to. It has, it's all very connected. So it's not just like how we look, but I feel like fashion has such complex and deep sort of, uh, fashion is a consequence of who we are. And, and that's, that's a cool, cool little quote. I should put that up somewhere. Um, someone said from fashion industry that fashion is a reflection of our society. And that is true. Fashion can, you know, you can express your sexuality with fashion, your religion, your culture, your heritage, your music taste. Um, fashion is such a beautiful tool. And I feel like the new generation, if something they feel in control of is how they represent themselves through fashion. So yeah, that's what I would say. Really interesting. And I think it's very interesting the way that you said fashion is a consequence of who we are, because I see it slightly the other way. I see fashion actually being this very conscious construction of our identities and how we wish to express ourselves. So I don't think it's necessarily, or at least for me, it's not me being like, I am this person, therefore I wear this. It's more of a, I'd like to be perceived as this person it allows me to play into a specific identity. And that informs the clothing choices I, ma I make. And then, you know, especially, you know, when you're an adolescent and you're a teenager and you're trying to affiliate with a, with a movement, you know, do I like rap? Do I like rock music? How do I dress? And it's kind of part and parcel is the same identity construction. And I think it's so interesting what you said about kind of all of the various elements that go into it and the shift that we're now seeing within our various generations around having these fashion garments that represent our values. And nowhere is it seen more than the sustainability space. Um, apart from when you obviously transition into metaverse and seeing the effect that now metaverse or virtual world related culture is coming back to reflect our physical culture is one of the most fascinating things. So when I try to explain it to people, I try to put it into the context of the way that we start to emulate the film and television that we watch. And soon that's slash already becoming the games we play. So looking at my smaller cousins who are like 10 or 11 years old, the skins that they wear in Fortnite reflect how cool they are in the playground and the physical world. And I also think we're gonna see the fashion items that are consumed in games and the brands that go and play in these virtual worlds, perfect example, Balenciaga Fortnite, you are then going to emulate those fashion styles and those fashion brand affiliations as you move into physical. And kind of around that, how do you, first of all, how do you see brands from your point of view interacting with these virtual worlds? And what do you think is really important for them to be conscious of moving into metaverse native spaces? Yeah, I think um, meaningfulness, uh, that was a word of my yesterday. Yesterday, I decided that meaningfulness is the word of the day. I haven't made my uh, mind of the word of the day today, but anyway, uh, maybe it's Albanon, I don't know. Uh, I think um, it's really important to create long-term strategies and create meaning in, in what brands do in the metaverse. You know, I don't like this sort of, um, um, there was a good word today someone said, but I forgot, but it's about, I don't like that um, these drops and releases could be very short term. You know what I mean? Like I'd love to, have an entire experience. I'd like to experience something that has, you know, something that I can carry with me or be part of for a longer period of time. And I feel like as much as opportunities the metaverse offers for the brands, there is a lot of traps as well to, to look out for. Um, it's not about to me, it's not about for the brands to, what, what's important is testing, right? There's a lot of testing happening. You know, Balenciaga doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. You know, there is Dolce Gabbana and there is uh, LVMH, Louis Vuitton doing this, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's all uh, like this short-term testing. Although I think that's what L uh, Louis Vuitton did with uh, Beeple is a, sort of a, like a longer, 
long-term strategy, uh, but that's just my speculation. I don't know anything about it. So uh, don't take my, my word for it. But um, I think that, again, going back to the same topic that I've always repeated um, is each brand specifically, even if you're luxury or not, you have your own narrative, you have your own brand purpose. You know, when you create a marketing campaign, there is a, there is a message you want to you want to deliver essentially so what i'm asking is what is the messages that these projects that have been released so far have <clears throat> you know uh i'm not getting any messages yet i mean it's super cool to visually test and execute and do quick drops here and there and um but you know What's more, I think it's really important to really think about the long-term strategy um, and experience for the physical brands to enter into the metaverse. And what I'm excited about is to create meaningful projects that have um, an impact for those people that actually engage in that experience or buy the NFT or digital assets or um, the brand essentially. Um, lots of opportunities around sustainability. Again, uh, what you do is essentially what you communicate about, right? Uh, that's my theory. Like, I don't consider myself as a marketer, but I do want to create activities that have um, meaning and purpose. And then I share that message. And then either it interests people or don't, but that's, um, that's what I think. So um, I would love to see more purpose and meaningfulness in these uh, activities. Although I'm very much for testing, um, I think that it's time for exploring sort of a longer term uh, initiatives in the digital space. And there is a lot of sort of copy pasting happening right now. People are doing same things. Uh, and to me, you know, there is not, you can't fit Gucci in, in Balenciaga shoes or Balenciaga in Chanel shoes or, you know, McQueen, Comme des Garçons, Rick Owens, you know. These are like incredible brands, like with huge stories and heritage, you know, um, that I feel like are underexplored. Mm. But I am very hopeful that these will be, you know, explored further in the, with time. I love what you said about fitting everybody into everybody else's shoes. I think that's really what we're seeing here. And especially because it's all first mover, right? So one person moves and then somebody else will iterate slightly on what they've had because it's the most risk adverse way to go about it. And I think one of the things that you said about message, which is really significant and kind of meaning is we're also still going off a physical commerce model. So probably in the eyes of a lot of brands entering in the space, the meaning and the purpose is how can I engage consumers to buy more physical clothes? And that's why these kind of seem a lot like ad campaigns or just ways to get their goods out there rather than actually, could we benefit from a diversified revenue stream? Could we add to the community? Could we seed deep consumer relationships through collaborations or engagements with virtual goods? So I'd say it's partially also to just do with the large, getting your head around the larger new commerce model which then shifts what you're trying to achieve when you're entering into a metaverse native environment. I mean, you know, um, just like when you're talking, I, was, I just got this like feeling uh, that Balenciaga's, uh, what was the name, Afterworld, um, it had um, pretty nicely um, embodied the, the mentality and lifestyle uh, of Balenciaga. But to me, it wasn't inclusive enough and the mm -hmm. tech was too complicated. It, and it sort of left people out. It stayed in sort of this video mode, even if you were uh, able to explore it and enter it. Um, but I feel like, um, where is the storytelling here? Mm. I don't find the storytelling here. I mean, there is a, you know, a brand working with another brand and they drop something and then there is a, this hype created and people go nuts for a second and then it's sort of some sort of like, um, uh, how do you call it? Like considered as an achievement to sell out in like four seconds. Like, okay, we're dropping now and we're sold out. We're sold out. This was so good. It was like sold out in five seconds. And then I'm like, 
You know, the same feeling that I got a year ago with the first 3D fashion week, the show was finished like in five minutes. I was like, what, what just happened? Like, did it end, you know? So that's why we're moving into this interactive real time space where people can have, first of all, utilize their assets, communicate, socialize through audio chat and really make it interactive and, and long-term. And what I'm really excited about when it comes to Digital Village is the infinity rooms of each user. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it to that. <laughs> okay, I think we're all quite excited to see what that actually means when you are prepared to share more information around that. I know that we only have a very, very short amount of time left, even though I could definitely continue this conversation for at least a couple of hours. So I wanted to end on a question that's been um, given by um, Susanna Mensha. And I think this is really in your wheelhouse, Evelyn. So the question is, what can digital fashion do to change the physical fashion production that is being made? Yes, people can wear garments digitally, but they will still want to need physical garments. How can the garments made be improved by physical platforms? And if all the learning to do is digital, will craftsmanship disappear to make physical garments? Boom. Boom. Whoever asked that question is on the right track. Um, super cool. Um, so first of all, we should stop telling that, oh my God, let's stop, like, or digital fashion will replace physical fashion. Let's stop there because you don't know that. We don't know this. We should have to, we, we, we have to stop this propaganda like now get get serious about the possibilities of digital fashion let's see how we can improve the physical fashion world first right i feel like we are somehow almost the same idea as like let's move to mars and you know who cares about the earth or like we're, it's almost like we've already given up on saving the earth tackling climate change and we're already like getting prepared packing our bags and going to mars or the moon so same thing comes to this, right? We have work to do. We have to, um, you know, you need to have clean sheets before you can buy a car. You know what I mean? Don't buy cars. But the point is that we have to first tackle the challenges in the <clears throat> physical fashion supply chain as a collective. Anyone who's working around digital fashion should focus on helping these companies utilize digital tools to eventually um, tackle their physical supply chains, right? And then after that, um, we can move forward. I think it's a step-by-step -step aspect that we need to take. Um, and then what was the second part of the question again? Second question, uh, the second part of the question was, um, if all learning you're doing is digital, is physical craftsmanship going to disappear? Mm -mm. I don't think so. Uh, what I'm excited about is uh, as much as people are saying that, you know, digital fashion is the only thing that's going to stay in the future. Um, you know, maybe digital fashion can even become more valuable, but I don't think it's the only thing for the future. And I think that when it comes to craftsmanship, that's a really good question. And um, you can look at it from two perspectives. Uh, or three perspectives, or more than more than uh, three perspectives. So first of all, um, in terms of 3D design, right? How can we use digital design in creating sort of innovative future couture, if you will? This is one thing, but it's a complicated element. The second part is how can we understand the impact that implementing digital tools to physical supply chains can have um, in the supply chain, the physical supply chain of the brand. And then the third part is maybe to um, understand how, I mean, there is a lot of assets out there, you know, um, and I'm not, I'm not satisfied with them. I really want to see high quality content. And I think digital couture is something that I'm very into. And even if that's a concept that I have been already explored, I don't think it's still there yet. And I think that physical craftsmanship will, just as nature is a source of inspiration for us, real fashion industry and real craftsmanship will always be an inspiration for digital fashion. I mean, maybe I'm conservative, which is in conflict with my innovative mindset, but I, that's what I think. 
I totally agree with you. And I also agree that I'm not seeing what I want from digital work at all either. You know, and for me, it's looking at the technologies that are being used in gaming, being used in digital art. Why have we not got generative digital fashion yet? You know, there are so many exquisite and exciting technological modes that could be leveraged in the digital fashion space that we're slightly behind with, but I can't wait to see those come to fruition. Um, so I know that you want us to end now. So Evelyn, thank you so much. Such a pleasure as always. And everyone, please go and check out the incredible work Evelyn's doing with Digital Village. Great, thank you so much. Thank, thank you everyone. You. And thank you, Evelyn. Um, I love, you. you know, the last question that we had about uh, Manny on digital craftsmanship, you know, someone I, uh, in the chat said Manny on digital craftsmanship <laughs> will always interact and bring up new findings and solutions. Don't worry about Boom. that. I couldn't agree Life more. <laughs> thank you, Saul. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Bye. Evelyn. Bye, Danny. All right. Bye. Both.